Okay, working with skies. Uh, this is a picture of the Metropolitan Cathedral over in Liverpool. Nice sky. Um, we could do some work with that. Uh, we've used selection tools in the past. Uh, we've used the quick selection, the magic wand. We've used a lasso or whatever you want to call it, tools. Uh, we've not used the pen tool. We'll come to those at a further date. I'm going to go up to the top here and choose select and color range. Color range will bring up this little dialog box. Uh, just take your fuzz in the slider up to the top there if it's not there already. Uh, we're going to click in the sky area with a little te uh, eyedropper, not teardropper, <laughs> eyedropper. I'm going to click around for a while. Yeah, that's quite good. And then take the fuzz and slider down. If I hold down the uh, shift key and click, you get the little plus sign, uh, add to that selection, move the fuzz and the slider again, shift and click. Yeah, looking good. Taking that down a bit further on the fuzz and slider. Shift and click again. Adding that to the selection. So I'm telling it I want all that blue sky to be selected. Uh, fine tuning with the fuzziness. And I'm going to click OK. Looking good. Let's go in a bit tighter and see what kind of detail we've managed to capture with a few clicks. So you can see all the structure around the top there. We've managed to retain the uh, spars and lines and bits of architectural detail inside just by clicking a few times inside the color range box. So let's click OK. That's going to give us a marching ant selection. Inside that marching ant is what we're going to use, which is the sky itself. And you see here the, art, the uh, ants are marching around the outside, and we're going to uh, use that. Just change to a brush for a moment. Uh, now, I could just drag it down onto the new layer. Um, I'm not going to this time. I'm going to go Control J, Command J on the Mac, and just uh, make a new layer out of the sky. So we have the sky itself, see there? Uh, not best, there are some checkerboard bits coming through. We didn't really do any after work on it. Uh, we just made a very quick selection of the sky. And I'm gonna change the blend mode to multiply. I'm gonna multiply those values and you see they get a very strong blue sky. If you're doing black and white conversion, this is gonna really give you a nice black sky. Uh, I'm gonna desaturate this, shift control U, shift command U, and then play with the opacity. Let's just take that around there and bring it back up again. Good, but not great. Um, I think if I change the blend mode to hard light, which is down here, hard light blend mode, that's looking a bit better. We're getting uh, more definition in those clouds. Again, play with the uh, opacity slider, take it up and down, see what suits. Uh, but I think there is looking very good. Let's just click off the background. You can see they've got a very thin uh, hard light blend layer working over our background. Uh, let's just go back in time because I want to do this. I want to refine this a bit and uh, Give me a bit more flexibility. So I'll go back to the color range again. Let's just go back to there. This time I will drag it down to the bottom and make a new layer out of this. So I'm just going to mouse down on it, grab it, and drag it onto the new layer icon at the bottom. And there we have our layer still with the selections active. I can click on a mask and that will load the selection as a mask into uh, this layer. And if I Alt click, Option click on that, that will show us what our mask looks like. Now it's a bit patchy. Uh, we did see before that it wasn't the greatest thing when we just made a, uh, a layer out of the sky selection. I'm going to choose the uh, color picker tool and just go around here and put some color picker points of, on here. Uh, at the moment it's in CMYK, I'm not too worried about that. I'm just going to put some points in uh, down here, here, just to check to see. Uh, in the CMYK range, it's showing the K is 1%. Um, I'm going to convert that to RGB and that's showing 253 across the board there. Uh, we can always use a grayscale. You could actually go into lab code if you wanted to. I don't want to. And again, uh, let's just have point 0.1 as well. And now that's RGB color and point 0.2, which should show nothing. And it does show nothing there, so that's nice and black. Uh, the other two, though, of course, are showing uh, a little bit of uh, not quite being completely black. So it's showing 253. If it showed 255, then it would be black. Uh, I'm going to go across to image adjustment levels, and you can see at the right hand side there, there are some tones which I can wipe away by just dragging that slider along there. Uh, if you have a look inside this box again, it's now showing uh, 255. Let's just fine tune that and take it back again. So just mouse down it, pull it back, still showing 255. So that's been driven into white, just to be sure that black's black. I'll pull that bottom up there. Uh, and then we've got a uh, black and white mount, uh, uh, mask, sorry. 
let's just click off that and clear those points it's still not brilliant there are some patchy bits in here which I can work on by painting over them uh, and I'm painting in normal blend mode in black at 100% just to really clear away those horrible bits of uh, spottiness as simple as that just painting over cleaning up the whole thing because I want that to uh, be hidden black to conceal don't forget now if I've got some detail uh, I want to clean up over here if I painted in white it would affect the black as well so I'm going to change this to overlay blend mode and then painting white again and you can see there as I'm painting an overlay it's only really affecting the white pixels uh, with the white paint the black paint itself will not be affected if you paint in overlay just very good for cleaning up the edges of mounts uh, and detail as well so if there's any, any mid tones or, or uh, slightly dark tones in there you can paint over so we have a nice clean tidy mount let's change the blend mode to hard light and you can see there again we've got a very strong sky I'm going to desaturate that uh, copy layer again so shift control U, shift command U we've got a nice bit of cloud coming through now uh, just by applying that uh, selection as a mask. We can also uh, work on the density of the mask. If you want to brighten up the foreground as well and reduce the effect of that uh, mask, you can go into this mask properties box, which is new in CS6. Uh, I wouldn't suggest feathering at all in this, not especially if we've got the sharp detail in the crown of thorns around the top there. Let's just reduce that again. But you have got that uh, option to play with the density. Now then, we can still work on this. I could call up a brightness contrast uh, adjustment layer and uh, we could always clip it to it. This little icon on the bottom here will uh, allow us to clip it to that layer. But at the moment, uh, I want to go and just, uh, just let's get rid of this. So just bin the whole thing. I want to use the uh, mask to create a selection. So control click on it. That will load that mask as a selection. And now when I call up the brightness contrast, the uh, sky is the only thing that's loaded into uh, our adjustment layer. So we can just move those slides up and down and again work on the sky. Uh, you could try going to luminosity. Uh, it doesn't have much effect at this moment in time. But you can fine tune your sky again just by using that uh, selection, converting it into a mount as you open your uh, brightness contrast adjustment uh, panel. And you can see there just a bit more work in it. You really are working that. And you might want to drop the uh, vibrance or saturation. We could do that uh, with just opening another layer. We can clip it, of course, to the layer below. And that means it will only affect the layer directly below. So the little icon at the bottom there, if we clip on it, it'll just affect the uh, brightness and contrast in the level below, not in the background layer. Which, again, is uh, fine-tuning your image. Uh, you can always then uh, go to the background layer, of course. Um, we're going to control click, uh, use that selection again, go to the background layer, and then itself have a separate brightness contrast controlling the background. So you've got all this fine control to work with skies. <laughs> Don't have too many layers, uh, it can get confusing. But you, from there, let's just uh, I'll click on the background, option click on the background. You can see how we started off. Um, with not too much work really. We've developed the clouds that were there in the sky. Uh, we've still got a nice color of blue. And uh, we, I think we've improved the image. Uh, well, I hope that's been uh, uh, useful to you. Uh, but until the next time, from me, that's bye for now.